Okay, you ready? ready? Okay, my name is Keith Gilbertson and I'm kind of, uh, I have 13 books that I've worked with that I'm an um, editor pretty much. And I, so I got three, I have, my dad has three books here. He's written autobiographies, 92 years old. One about the war and a couple of autobiographies. And this one is a collection of um, all his grandchildren wrote stories about travel. Um, my sons have two books, Climbed Every Mountain in the World. I have two here that are uh, Appalachian stories uh, of a student I have that I'm a, re I'm a reading teacher. I teach at um, BCTC, Community College. Five down here, Truman, who's, I don't know what he's going to come in. They're one of his books I work with, so if you know Truman Fields, he's back here. So um, the book I'm going to concentrate on today is one that I we just came out with that uh, we're real proud of. I teach at um, English as Second Language. And what I did here a couple of years ago is a student came, uh, we showed a movie on grit, <coughs> perseverance, determination, all this type of thing. So I said, write a story about perseverance, grit, determination. So somebody wrote about their, their father, or their mother, um, maybe a, an athlete, a famous person. Well, Beatrice Babayo, um, refugee, in Congo, spent four or five years going across buses, walking rivers with her two children. And this represents on the cover here, this represents her uh, with her baby there. She said she carried on the back sometimes on the front um, and her other son. So they lived in a refugee camp for four, four or five years. Um, and they came to the United States. Now she, and then when she came here, she's working with the refugee ministry. So I'll read you a couple of things out of her, out of her books, and it's, it's, um, uh, I, yeah, we'll read here. Um, we reached, the title is, We Are Grit. Grit means being determined to achieve. You need a clear vision of what you need to do and how you need to do it. We tell our students that every day in class, but this is a little bit different. We reached the camp after long weeks of travel with lots of stops in different places that I can't count. Happy that a new chapter of life had started, and then realized that my prayer was heard and I thanked God for that. We were given six blankets, the kind that are called dog blankets here, and a small room that measured about three meters by two meters. This room was a big joy for us as long as we were together and alive. Now that we were in Zimbabwe, we had to learn the language and learn to survive depending on food distributions that were done once a month. She told me, if you don't know the language, you don't get any food. Um, the food was not last two weeks. There were no stoves, toilets, was very dirty, but we had running water from the tap 24 seven. What a blessing. And you go to Africa, any place around the world, water, people are walking two miles for water every day. Uh, I spent some time in Nepal, People there are only walking a quarter mile, a quarter mile to a half mile to get water every day. It's not too bad. Another story in here is Princia from Congo. There's two Congos. There's a um, Democratic Republic of Congo and Republic of Congo right next to each other, and that's they're fighting each other and, and Rwanda and Burundi and all these different countries. She's talking about her name is Princia, named for princess growing up, and she's no longer a princess when she's 16 years old run out of the out of the um, the town where they're living and live in the forest for a couple of years just running but she's talking about the people in her country and says we're all the same and that can go for we are all the same um, stop listening to those who told you people from the south are strangers or enemies you need to kill them people from the north are enemies you need to kill them our presidents are looking for their family's future for their leadership they are sending us far away from home because they know that together we are strong. Remember, there is no place as home. We're all the same. No one is above another. We're all the same. We have the same ancestor. We are all the same. We drink the same water from our beautiful river. And it's Congo River in French. We're all the same because we can't divide our country. And she's talking about the countries of Africa there. Look at the ones you call enemies who do not speak your language. They don't understand you. We need to build our future. Our land should be called liberty. Our sky should be called unity. Let's see, I'll read a couple more in here. 
Uh, this is by Amori Kikoko from Democratic Republic of Congo. I remember one day back in 1999 when my parents decided to flee the country by water. That night we were busy packing bags, get, making sure everything was ready for a long voyage. The next day in the afternoon we found a boat that would take us somewhere which we had no idea of. The boat started sailing and before we were not two miles from the seashore, here came the chief commander asking everyone to come off from the boat. He was pointing a rocket at us. If you keep going forward, I will release the rocket at you. We had no choice but to come off from the boat. I saw my death at that moment. I thought that day was the end of my life. Thank God we were sent home and told never to return back again. Well, then he spent his years in, in refugee camps. Um, there's one from, another one from Congo. As they approached the village, no, we were all scared because it was dark. We couldn't tell if it was the government army or the rebels. As they approached the village, we heard them coming into the house and asking with loud voices, where are the boys? Where are the boys? Then he talks later when they say it in French. They come in there, they're looking for ones over 12 years old, and then they're gonna join the rebels. They will be fighters then. Um, I don't have any boys. The only ones I have are under 10 years old. Please don't kill me. They looked in every room, but they didn't see anyone. When they got to my parents' room, they found my dad in the storeroom closet. After be beating him so bad, they took him with him. He became a forced recruit for the rebels. So some of the kids hid in the woods. And um, how am I doing for time here? I got <laughs> books here. Um, this is, so these are 60 stories in here from Bhutan. Um, just how to get water. There's uh, Chinese. Uh, my parents made a very smart decision to have me. Um, if the first baby is male, you cannot continue to have a second child. My mama told my grandma told me one day my mom went to the hospital to have an, an abortion, but the doctor told her your baby is too big for the abortion. So now, just let the child be born. So now, uh, she went, then when she was born, they, they had, um, before they paid the fine because of her, they changed her last name into Wang. So if anyone asks her, her name was Yu Ming Wei. They ask you, what's your name? B.B. Wong. So, <laughs> um, if they ask you, are your parents, you better say, I'm too young to remember that. If they ask you, from which neighborhood you come from, say the next village. So that you, they had to lie. And there's like a two stories like that in there. There's this many in there. Um, okay, about four more minutes. Four more minutes. I'll just give you an idea of some other books that I have here. Um, my sons have written two books. Uh, this one is uh, Appalachian Trail. Uh, this one is they climbed all 50 states, the highest point in there. I climbed half of them with them. And there's about six continents. Their, their next book will be coming out. It's all 23 North American high points, which are the first ones in the world to do that one. This one, I'm, these, these two books I'm very, very proud of. Um, well, I'm proud of all of them, but this is my father has written we, he's 92 years old, uh, World War II combat infantryman. We found his letters that he'd written to his parents and his brothers and, and sisters uh, three years ago. They've been sitting in the attic for 70 years. So these are those 60 letters. And then what he recalls, because he couldn't tell you everything that was going on, mm -hmm. censorship. So then he'll back up some of, the, some of the letters. And he said, oh, yeah. And then they, so we back him up with a lot of historical facts um, from the 100th Division. He was in a unit that 180 men got off the boat in France. If they were going to load the boat up at the end of the war, 29 of them would have been able to get back on. Mm -hmm. So a lot of casualties. Uh, these two, are, they got started with Appalachian Mother's Love and These Old Hills, written by a student that I take me more time than two minutes, but the, 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 the man here, is, he's 55. When I met him, 23 letters of the alphabet. Marthy, Mark, Luke, and John, and Tony, and love is what he knew. He's written two books. The thing about it is he still can't read his own books. 
and he doesn't dictate them. He writes every word down. I'd have to. I need more time to explain uh -huh. to you. But these two books, if you want, if you want authentic Appalachian culture, this is right from the person's mouth. It's not filtered through education. It's not filtered through anything. It's just from the heart. It's autographic memory. You can remember conversations verbatim from 50 years ago with his papa. Mm -hmm. So, am I out of time? Yeah, I got another minute? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, another minute. This is my first one my dad wrote. Um, Verdi. Verdi in Norwegian. He speaks Norwegian. Uh, Verdi means value. So what he did is he took the picture in his Piper Cup, flew over his family. So he got the value of, of family, farm, faith, is a cross here. And uh, so all the family values in here. So, and his name is Verdi. He's a international wood carver. He won awards in, in, in Norway. So he's written three books. And so they're all on here. So I'm a compiler. My next project is with a student of mine who was a, what you call a, in the Crips and the Bloods, you know, the gangbang. So he's a gangbang. He spent 10 years in prison. And now he's out motivating kids up in, he's got an organization called Motivated All Day Every Day. And up in Lexington. So he's uh, working with youth in, in Lexington and uh, giving back to society. Yeah. He took for a long time. Now he's here. So that's my next project. <laughs> and then there's my book. <laughs> Unusual Points is the name of my book in my recent life. Okay? Wow. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you.